Now, where are all the parties standing? This is 2022. On the raw numbers, we'll later model them for turnout. We had the ANC at 46, the DA at 25, the EFF at 12. If an election occurred and had the same level of voter turnout as what was the case in 2019, the ANC was at 49, DA 25, EFF 12. At 66 turnout, that was 65 turnout. It's essentially the same thing. And at a lower turnout, we had the ANC a little bit higher at 52. The margin of error on this stuff was 1.7%. So the ANC was just hanging on. And um, there's quite a lot of media. The ANC's done, kaput, will... I think Herman Mushaba said in an interview today it's, it's going to get 30%. If, if it does, then we were very far off on these figures here. We think it's, it's, it's clinging to 50. This is data from March of this year. Raw ANC 46 as opposed to 46. Uh, it's just down a, a fraction of a, of a point. Uh, we didn't do 65 turnout. 66 turnout, we've got them at 52. And 56 turnout, we've got them at 53. And the main reason, the DA, we've still got a 25 consistently. We think there's some life going on in Encarta. And we think ASA has been um, giving up a little bit of ground, sitting around 3 to 4% at the moment. Now, this book fiasco, its DA voters have probably quietly returned to their former home. The... Um, Reason, uh, we, don't, uh, we don't know the reason why this figure is a bit up is partly because these things change from day to day. But also likely because the most hopeful thing a voter hears today is the broader opposition saying, we will work together, not against each other, to put together sensible, moderate solutions to your problems. And that fills them with hope. It's the most positive thing you can say as a political leader. And they all know it because we've told them this is the thing to say. And they sat at some media conference today and apparently squabbled with each other for the whole hour. It's amazing to see. And therefore, you, you know, I'll have clients outside of SRF that will say to me, they can't believe the ANC is at 50%, given the lights are off, no water, and you know, general pandemonium. And the answer to them is that for the ANC to lose, someone has to win. That voter has to go somewhere that inspires them. And in this week, if we took this week, what truly inspired a voter who's afraid of leaving to say, I'm crossing the great divide and I'm going to the other. There's nothing there, I, I would say, that would so inspire you. Except in, in Natal, in Carter's doing quite well. Here's, here. Yeah, there is a big drop in the EFF. Part of that, you can take, let's say, two points off that drop on margin of error questions, and it's not so large anymore. You could also say what Sarah Palin thought, and that polls can get things a bit off. But the scale of the drop read against the flop of the EFF national stay away and the consequence of the Natal riots and violence, which showed people, reminded them what real violence and riots mean. So if you advocate for violent revolution, we did one in Natal, and the poor got absolutely hammered as a consequence. I think these factors have come together to explain that EFF support is off. If it, I don't know if it's off to the extent that we show here. I think we took it down here from what, 12 to eight and 12 to six even on 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 a turnout modeled one i think yeah yeah i'd i'd from all this data the way to use it be deeply skeptical of it if we're getting the same trends in the data time and again you can probably trust that the trend is broadly accurate so that vast fall in EFF support tells me that the EFF isn't growing, firstly, I'm confident on that, and it's probably losing quite a lot of support. But the full extent of it we'd have to test time and time and time again, which we do and we'll see what comes back. We also, there is also another thing, there, there's a 5% group that bounces between the ANC and the EFF. They bounce on quite 
that ping pong ball up and down. So he might just have hit the ANC on a bit of a high at 53, might have hit the, uh, the EFF at a, at a little bit of a low. Then, um, oh no, no, we haven't even done this. This is important. But this is the story of this great hope. I want my party to take part in a coalition of all voters strongly agree is, what's that, 60%. Plus agree, let's give that another 10, it's about 70% saying they want this to happen. Of ANC voters, it's astonishing. At 60% and 10 again, it takes you almost up to, up to 80. And that's important because why are they saying that? Are, if you were happy with your brand, the service you're getting, the product you're buying, why are you telling a researcher that you would be very keen if this company was taken over or put into some sort of partnership with someone else? is because those ANC voters are already past the point of no return and they're busy with this long process. There's a bit of a lag time between experience and political action of getting out. And they would have got out in much bigger numbers if the opposition broadly at its leadership level had its act together as a united front. I'm looking at the numbers and I spend a lot of time with them. I think that had we seen the broader opposition work together as a united bloc, kill each other behind the scenes if you have to, but not in front of the cameras all the time. If they had done that, and as a consequence had done any good in running Gauteng much better than had been the case for the ANC leadership, I think you could put the ANC down from the 50 we've got there to 40 and heading south from that. And that, you'll see later, might just have been enough to put a coalition government in power. We did test opposition government in Johannesburg specifically. We polled that as the coalitions broke up. And I think 7 in 10 township voters told us they noticed no difference between the government of the coalition and the government of the ANC. And so you, you, you know, there's the thing that's sometimes said about the Middle East, never missing an opportunity to miss an opportunity. And we're, we're well in the throes of that. 